playing Division One basketball or playing any sport, you, you have to establish your role in whatever you do in your sport and just appreciating just the love of the game of basketball. And that's how I feel here. I just want to contribute anything that I can. If that's playing one minute, 10 minutes, zero minutes, if that just means I'm on the bench, communicating play calls, defensive sets, anything that I can do, I'll do whatever it takes to get a win here being a Spartan. I'm from a small town called Powers, Michigan. It's actually a village of probably 400 people, so not very many. So it's definitely a different feeling than, you know, growing up in a bigger city. I knew everybody in my whole class. I knew their middle name, their last name, who their parents were, who their grandparents were, who their cousins were. So it really felt like a family atmosphere growing up there. It's definitely put things in perspective for me, just how to respond to things outside of the, the Upper Peninsula and never changing who I am. I was brought up a certain way through my parents and other family members, and I never wanted to lose who that was. And, and that was like toughness, grit, always having that chip on my shoulder, and, I, and just being the most caring person I can and taking care of other people as the best I can and just making relationships. My dad was actually on the first ever state basketball championship team at my high school back in 1984, so just growing up, I wanted that as badly as anybody. So that was always our goal. My sophomore year, we won our first one and I was so special and then after that I was like, hey, we got a lot of guys coming back, let's keep this trend going and it went year after year so we won three straight. I only lost one game ever and that was due to just that, that family atmosphere of great teammates, great coaches, great family, great community around me. So that was a blessing in itself, you know, and then it followed into football, winning two state championships and eight man. It was just so cool just as a collective, a small community coming together like that and doing something special, that was just awesome. I had a couple of options coming out of high school. You know, I thought about playing football, but I knew basketball was where my heart truly lied. You know, I had an option to walk on here out of high school as well. And then I ended up getting an offer from Western Michigan University, which I was very blessed to receive. I had a great four years at Western Michigan and through COVID and my redshirt year, I was able to have two years of extra eligibility. So I entered the portal and right away, the first place I wanted to come and contribute was Michigan State University. I wasn't looking for a scholarship. I was just looking that, hey, can I help my childhood team win a national championship? It just felt like home. All the state championship games were played here. So that was such a great experience growing up in high school and playing at the Breslin. So when I came back for that meeting, I'm like, ah, it's nice to be back. And if I can call this place home, that'd just be very special for me and my family. And just having those connections previously, we had great conversations and they welcomed me with open arms. So I was very blessed. Jump shot from the side is no good that time over there by Kelser. And there's a fight for the rebound as the ball goes all the way down to the other end of the court. Who has it? Well, Whiten did a great job of hustling for it. I got here in July. The grind starts. You know, I get welcomed into a new family. The guys were fantastic, just hyping me up, welcoming me. My energy's high. You know, I'm about to live my dream of playing uh, for Michigan State. And I get out there in my first three minutes. Uh, I go for a Euro step and there goes one of my knees. Michigan State player control foul on 34, Jason Franklin. That's his first 18. Tore my ACL, unfortunately. That was tough to handle. I kind of said to him, you know, you want to be done, you know, this and that, and because he had the COVID year and the sixth year kind of, it was still his dream. I, at first, I was at my most high. I'm living my dream. I get to go out there, play my butt off for, for Coach Izzo and all, all my teammates, for my family, just everything it felt like it was finally coming together. And then something like that happens and you really just go to your most low. You're like, like why does this happen? Well, I had that night to feel bad about myself. And I'm like, hey, like this, this sucks. Uh, but that next day, I'm like, all right, let's get back to being better. You know, that's not me to, to quit on anything and just to lay down. Like, I wanted to get back up and be better than I was before. Jason was just really ready to attack the rehab. He's not a halfway kind of guy. He's all in all the time, everything that he does. From the day that he had his diagnosis, uh, to the day that he had surgery, to the day we started rehab, to the day we finished rehab, 
kind of the same mindset. I'm gonna attack the day, I'm gonna do everything I can all the way up until the limit of what I'm allowed to do every single day. Playing so many games in high school, I think I played like 109, and I never missed a game, never got hurt. Even growing up, I never had a big injury like that. So when that first initial happened, I didn't know how to respond. It was so shocking. I didn't know what was gonna lie ahead of that, but it definitely established my work ethic even more. I thought I was a pretty hardworking guy before then, but what it takes to come back from an injury like that, it really instilled in me what it takes to come back and even be even better. Obviously you hear ACL and everybody like freaks out and they go, man, that's such a tough injury, you know, and I just wanted to prove them wrong. And being able to be at Michigan State University, I had all the resources around me to get me to that point. Nick Ritchie, Marshall Rep, you know, played a huge part in my recovery process along with all my teammates and the coaches just with the motivation of, hey, we need you back, we want you back. And that just was in my head and obviously, them guys not letting up on me and it was every single day. Like, I don't even think I had an off day. Like I was doing something every single day to come back from that. Them really treating me with that as much detail as they did, I, I couldn't thank them enough. The ball right now is Thompson. But the ball's thrown away. White and all the way. Turn the turnover into points. Nice layup. Terrific defense by White. And that's his first two of the game. What he's done, I feel really good about. And now I think he's going to help us even a little bit more. And now he's even playing a little bit, just like what happened to me. You know, it's a dream come true for him. And, and I get to be a part of him living his dreams, his goals. That's really what it was for him. It was like this fantasy of Disney, you know? I mean, I get to go to Michigan State. I get to be on a big time team. And so Hogarth gets it. In traffic. Oh, it goes over there to Jason Whitens, who just got his first Spartan basket. As soon as I got here, I was a walk-on, but I got treated with the same respect as from the top down. And that's what's just what makes it a family here at Michigan State. It's something special to be a part of when you feel like you're just as much a part of it as anybody, whether you're a walk-on, scholarship player, a GA, a manager, coach, it doesn't matter, we're all one. I can't say there's a better place to play in the country. I'm very thankful to be a part of it. It's very special. There's a picture of me holding that Michigan State basketball when I was like three, four years old. So every time I think about what I'm doing here, I'm doing it for that little boy because I knew that was his dream when he was growing up and I want to make him proud each and every day. So I don't want to take any days off because he knows how special it is. So I just keep that in the back of my mind that, hey, you're doing something special here. Make it the most you can. I'm from Selma, California. It's a really small town. It's right in the middle of the state in the 559 in the Central Valley. There was a lot of farmland where I lived, so that was pretty much the big point of my life. It was really farming and wrestling. We grow grapes and raisins, mostly raisins. That's what we mainly focus on. Um, we farm about 350 acres of land, so we got a pretty big spot we got to take care of. Selma is the raising capital of the world. The farming here is a little bit different compared to the Midwest type farming. In the Midwest, there's bigger farms. You use more machines, you know, bigger tractors. Here in the Central Valley, it's more manual labor. And he's helped me since he was five years old. He's out there, it's 110, 115 degree heat, and basically a winter jacket, head to toe gloves basically picking up these raisin sacks and throwing them in the harvester. I was like, man, no wonder if this guy's so tough. I tend to do more of the hard stuff that they don't want to do because I'm younger, so I can do it a little bit better. Sometimes it's just as simple as irrigating and pulling weeds and just making sure everything is clean and ready to go for season. I have a machine, it's, a, it's called a raisin shaker. So we dump these thousand pound bins over the shaker, clean up the raisins, take all the foreign material out, box them up, send them into the packer. Well, he's been running my machine since he was eight years old. So I've watched him do it. I didn't really help him too much. Cause they have land, they have like these cool like ATVs, these gators and stuff. So we would drive those. And when he was working, I would drive those. <laughs> and so, you know, it is very physically demanding. He's not a competitor, so he would never complain about it. But he would always tell me, he's like, Dad, 
I hope you know when, when, I, when I get older, I'm not doing this no more. He's like, this is why I'm going to school. I don't want to do this forever. He doesn't want to be a farmer. He just basically does it to help us as a family. Me and my dad have always been pretty close and we got really close after my brother passed away. As I got older, I knew myself how hard it was farming, the distresses, and I was just wanted to help to alleviate some of that on my dad so it wasn't all put on him. So anything I could do, even if I didn't want to do it, um, I just wanted to help him. He does the farming, so anything would ever happen to me, he's gonna be fine. We're super, super close. We have a special relationship. I started wrestling when I was six. Both the sides of the family wanted me to wrestle and they've really pushed for me to wrestle. I played other sports growing up, but we always knew this is what I was gonna be doing when I got older. He really liked to play basketball. Basketball was his passion, but I mean, he's just not big enough for basketball. His mom's side of his family was real, real big in wrestling. When he first started walking, he was already going to tournaments and he was around it. And he was gonna be a wrestler. One way or the other, he was gonna be a wrestler. My grandpa was the wrestling coach for my uncle, so I already had the pipeline and Salma from them. My uncle was probably one of my most favorite coaches ever. He was a lot different than coaches I had in the past and different than my dad. He was the one who really wanted me to wrestle in college, besides my parents, obviously, but he pushed me a lot more. Once I got to about middle school, that's when I was like, okay, like this is what I'm gonna do. I stopped playing other sports and I just focused on wrestling. And that's when I started winning a lot more. Once I started winning, I didn't want to stop winning. His grades were always really, really good. And out of our school, we had several scholarships annually. Wrestlers going to, to big colleges. He actually figured out that, you know what, I could do that. I can go to college and you know I can get it paid for. And that's when he really started taking it more serious and everything started to fall into place. I won two state championships in high school. The first state championship was pretty special. It definitely sparked my interest more in wrestling because it was basically telling myself that I'm good enough to be here and I could accomplish the goals that I've set for myself at the highest level. The recruiting process for Tristan was a little unique. He had already committed to Fresno State University. Tristan was very close friends with Chase Saldate, who had already verbally committed to us, and he said, well, do you guys need a 25 pounder? Are you recruiting? And uh, that kind of opened things up. I convinced T to come to Michigan State with me because he was my best friend at the time. And I knew he'd really like it. The opportunity I was getting, I've been here, T never seen this place. And that just changing it up for four or five, six years would, would be really huge for both of us as a whole. And that's why I really pushed him to come. And I kind of was annoying about it. I was like, dude, just take a visit, take a visit, take a visit. He was trying to get me to come up here. He wanted me up here with him. He didn't want to be by himself. So that's how I like to think of it. It just felt like family here. And where I come from in wrestling, there was a small community and we were really close and it was really tight knit. And I felt like it was like that over here and I really liked it. And then the fact that everybody just wanted to be great, that's the same mindset I had and that definitely contributed to me coming here. Tristan, right away, you could see his toughness, his work ethic, and his willingness to speak up to the, to the rest of the program. And it spoke to who he was, and he was willing to um, be a leader right away as a freshman. There's no doubt the farming background and the toughness that goes into that has been a natural correlation to the wrestling world. You can't break him physically. He's just so mentally tough, and I think it's from just doing the hard labor work in 100 plus degree weather every day since you were growing up. To this day, he goes home and works. He doesn't fear a lot. I don't know if it's because what he's been through throughout his life, but the kid just doesn't have any fear. And he'll, he'll tackle any challenge that comes his way. So that makes me feel good. Everything that Tristan does, he does 100%. He's committed to it. And that's to his academic work, that's to his wrestling, that's to working on the farm. Once he commits his mind to something, you're going to get the 100% version of Tristan Mulan. 1500, you can lock that one in. The amount of hard work we put in, it always feels so good to get a win. It feels like a lot of weight's lifted off your shoulders. And just winning for my team is like winning for my family. I want to win just for them, my, for myself, and for the team and, and the school, represent them well.
Give it to him today, man. You should feel great. You should feel like Superman today. Come on, competition speed. Come on, Chase. Keep moving. Keep moving. 2-1. Two, 2-1. One, two, one. Come on. You should be firing. You should be firing. Firing. There you go. Shoot that corner. I think we're looking real good, you know? I think we always have something to work on, like anything, you know? There's always something to improve, and um, I think, you know, mentally guys are in a good place. We just uh, we just staying focused and just working hard and keep pushing each other, and I think we're going to continue to get better every single day, every single week. It's not warm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to go into the duels feeling cold or anything. Want to get a nice little warm up before. So uh, yeah, nice little early morning warm up and get the day started, right? I think working out, you know, this early gets you like kind of up and ready to go. I'm not laying around all day. You know, I I like these workouts. They get me they get me ready and feeling right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm ready to go. Right now, I gotta beat the scale first, but I'm not trying to think about that match, really. Uh, just do what I'm used to. Uh, we practice every day, we train hard, so feeling confident. I don't wanna think about the match too much. Just going in there, doing my thing. Welcome inside the Pensatola Sports Center here on the east side of Providence. The Michigan State Spartans in town. The Spartans coming in five and oh on the season. It's about enforcing your dominance right now, okay? Go out there and take it from them. Go out there, don't hang around, don't let them hang around, okay? You go out there, execute. We're, we're, we're gonna be the attacking team tonight. Put that in your head. We will be the attacking team. You go out there and you dictate the pace, all right? Hey, we're Michigan State. We're the Big Ten, okay? We're the Big Ten. We're expected to come out here and put on a show and wrestle up, okay? So it doesn't matter who we're wrestling, we wrestle up, we be us. A very talented Michigan State team that has been steamrolling opponents, started the year unranked and they've risen to the top 25. Big lift! The takedown for Betty Gomez. Come on, Betty, come on, come on. No escape and that's a good take. Nice job, nice match, nice match, Betty. Nice job. And there's another takedown. Head in the ribs, cradle! Rayvon Foley again, one of the best in the country at 133. Hey, way to push though, way to push. Hey, that was good, he made you work. He's got it, hey, we knew it was coming. Omanya 8-1 on the season, 5-0 and in dual meet competition. Position, position Peyton, let's go, come on. They will give credit to Omanya for the takedown. You see what they're trying to do? They're trying to keep it close. You guys are wrestling very well right now, and I love the way we're riding on top. I'm telling you, it's paying dividends. Guys don't like it, guys can't deal with it. And uh, Saldate with takedown points quickly. A victory by pin for Chase Saldate. Michigan State adds to the lead. This has been a dominating first period at 165. This could be a technical fall in the first period. And that's a good turn by Caffey. Final score will be Michigan State by a 38 to three count. You guys did what we were supposed to do. Come in here and uh, take care of business. And as we go throughout the season, we're going to be our best at the end. We're, we're headed in the right direction. We are definitely headed in the right direction, and uh, we're going to keep it up. We're going to keep training. We're going to keep improving, and uh, we're going to keep growing every day. Bring it Let's go, bring it in, guys. Go. All right, family on three. One, two, three. Family. So the De-Stress Fest is a night full of games, activities, inflatables, music, food to really help our athletes de-stress during finals week. They've got a ton of hectic schedules, so we really wanted to dedicate one night to them 
to be able to come and actually have fun. We want to be cognizant of what they're facing during final exams week. It's important that our wellness and performance unit had this idea. We wanted to bring it to fruition to really help our student athletes know that they're supported, heard, valued, and seen, and that we really want them to just do the best they can on their finals, but also have an opportunity to just step away and decompress. I'm working with athletes on a daily basis. I've seen their schedules. They have schedules that are pretty much dictated for them, and so we felt that it was really important to celebrate them and be able to offer them an opportunity to hit pause and actually have a little bit of fun outside of their strict schedules. I am looking forward to seeing Allen in the dunk tank. I think that'll be the highlight of the night. Not even close. <laughs> therapy dogs. They're also going to have a gratitude wall where they can pause and take a moment to share some gratitude. I'm really grateful for our entire athletics family that supported this, specifically Dr. Covan, Sally Noble, so many great folks who are part of the committee to make this work tonight. It's a total team effort. 